Hello and welcome to another episode of Lemur's Corner. I am Lemur and today guys we are playing Player Unknown's Battleground aka PUBG. So in this episode we are going to be talking about tips and tricks for the game. Try to give you guys the best advice I can for improving your game skills. It doesn't going to help you necessarily with your shooting ability so either you have that or you don't. I don't always have that. So I'm going to be playing a solo mission while we do this or a solo game. And we can go ahead and try to explain a lot of the things I'm doing. I'm going to try to cover all the basics when we're doing it and why we're doing it. And hopefully we can get into a couple engagements and try to cause something. So first things first is you want to try to know where the plane's going. This plane's going to tell us right where we're going and how we're going to get there. And I like to use my pips to decide where I'm going to jump. I want to jump far enough that we actually have to use our parachute swing. So we'll go right here. That's fine with me. And then I'm going to try to line up my little marker what's going to be the shortest point between us. Kind of call it and be like, yeah, that'll work. So then we'll go ahead and jump out right here. And that way I can get to my pip, turn right to it, and start making my way over here. So to know if you need to know your parachute early, you can kind of look at the distance going from there to there and how fast you're covering it versus how fast you are losing your height that you can see on the left. The white bar is when you're going to pull your parachute. And I know there's a hill here, so I know I'm going to gain a little bit of space on this one. So we'll see what happens and see how it works out for us. But I should be able to make it without pulling my parachute early. If you wanted to, you just hit F right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let this parachute, right when this parachute pulls, though, I'm going to release my W key so I don't drop down. If you hold your W key, you're going to gain a bunch of, or you're going to lose a bunch of distance. I want to keep mine because obviously I'm going to need a swing. I'm going to go for those back buildings in that warehouse and that garage, whatever you want to call it. So while I'm doing that, I'm just going to swing just like this. As you guys can see, I am just sitting here swinging and swinging, and it's going to be like a long W, not quick, so W, and then release and then W, and then release. And then make sure you guys are looking around to see if you got anyone coming. Uh, I'm gonna treat this as if I have someone with me. It doesn't look like I do. So we're gonna go ahead and land here. I'm gonna jump down and go ahead and try to find a gun. Uh, that's the first thing I tell you guys to do right when you get on the ground. Go find a gun, find something to fight with. And when you do find that gun, go ahead and jump to the prone. Reason you wanna jump to the prone, just like this, uh, is because when you grab your weapon, you can grab it, reload it, and if someone's chasing you, trying to punch you, uh, they can't punch you very well on the ground, so we can go ahead and defend ourselves a little bit better. Or reload, grab our gun and then stand up and shoot him in the face. It works out really well. So I'm going to continue to loot here, guys, and try to work on uh, some of the difficult, or not the difficult, try to work on uh, getting some guns here and everything. So the first gun you see, grab it. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the pistol. This one specifically the revolver. I like pistols, it's just not the revolver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick it up, but I'm not going to load it. If I can get a better pistol, I will switch it out for it. So, oh, look, 45. Okay, so we'll go ahead and load up this pistol now because it takes forever to load the 7.62 and it takes a while and it keeps you from looting actually. So, what I like to do is grab a standard pistol, either the 45 or the 9 mil, and it helps you out quite a bit. So, uh, talking about pistols, make sure you guys get those loaded and you're ready to go and you have it out. Um, and, and be ready to fight. Now let's talk about uh, med kits, or not med kits, I apologize. Let's talk about this armor really quick, as you guys can see, and carry weight. So there are two things that increase your carry weight on your character, that is backpacks and vests. Vests also give you armor for your chest, and these vests also give you carry weight. The carry weight is the same for all three levels, but the armor increases as you get a higher level on your vests. So with that, uh, backpacks increase carry weight as they go in higher levels. They don't give any armor. And then the helmets and everything, it's the same thing. So now talking about armor and the differences, let's talk about the levels and how to know when to replace it. Because when you get shot, you're gonna have your armor is going to take damage and it's eventually going to lose durability. Now the overall armor doesn't drop, just the durability drops. So if you have a level 3 vest that's got over half health, I would not suggest switching it out. Ooh, level 2 backpack, nice. All right, let's grab this extended bag and switch it out. Um, but basically, uh, oh gosh, I mean, I'm getting lucky with these scopes today. Um, basically, we are going to look at these vests and everything and we're going to take them and grab them and, and then as i said the durability so there's as you go up in armor it goes up higher and higher and then the durability can drop so if it's above 50 percent gone if you're only dropping down one level so if you have a level three vest that's 50 percent or 75 percent damage done to it it's not a big deal to switch out for a level two vest and get the full durability back i think it's totally equivalent Yes, you're going to take a little bit more damage off of it, but you've got a little bit more durability. Um, while we're talking about this really quick, while I'm running over here, the reason I'm running all the way to this garage, as you guys just saw when I looked back, was that that's where the zone is, and over here is where the 
uh, furthest loot is. So I'm going to go ahead and loot this and loot my way towards the zone. So I'm actually always moving towards the zone. So I don't have to actually fight my way out of the zone or fight, you know, coming all the way back here and relap myself and do extra walking. So let's just go ahead and get that there. But back to the armor. It helps you, um, the durability. So I suggest it. And if it's level 3 and it's over 75%, um, I pretty much I won't switch out of level 3 for a level 2 unless it's pretty much broken completely is pretty much what I'm trying to say, level 1. So level 1 I pretty much try to avoid switching out of level 3, 4, but if it's level 2 and it's 75% broken and you're about to pick up level 1, I think it's totally worth it because you still only lose a little bit of armor, but you gain so much durability back that you'll take more shots because you do have health. Now, when we're done uh, talking about that with taking damage and stuff, uh, and I grab these painkillers actually, um, I want to make sure you guys understand that when you guys are medding and using your med kits and everything like that, um, it's really helpful. Ooh, VSS, nice. All right, so remind, I got to remember to talk about the, the ammo, but uh, med kits and painkillers help you um, get back to health. Now, med kits and bandages only bring it to a certain point uh, in there, and then uh, once you get to that point, either you have a choice to use a painkiller or an energy drink. Uh, or two energy drinks, I apologize. Uh, one painkiller does the full health above it and will give you a quick run bonus. Um, that's if you're over 50% of that boost with painkillers and med kits. Uh, that gives you that boost. And then it's two energy drinks to get you full health because the energy drinks will only take you right to the very, very edge of everything. So um, that's the basic medical supplies there right there. Now let's talk about ammo and why I do it. So I'm picking up a lot of extra attachments, extra ammo, just in case I get a good gun or anything. And um, what I'm going to say is that when I pick up my guns, I try to keep them somewhat similar, except for, for 5.56. Five, Obviously, I only want one of those, and I'll get other stuff beyond that. But when it comes to ammo for guns, so like I've got my VSS, I've got my Micro Uzi, I would love, um, and then I've got my pistol. Hopefully, um, well, I'll get a 9mm pistol so I can switch it out, so I only carry one to ammo, and I've got tons of ammo for it. Um, obviously, right now, I still have my 45, and I'm hoping to get something different for it. But as long as I keep my pistols together and I keep everything. Now, I'm picking up 7.62 in case I get like an ACAM or something. Ooh, look, a 9mm pistol. Okay, we can switch that out really quick. In case I get an ACAM or a nice sniper. Um, however, if my bag space does not permit me to do it anymore, then I will obviously dump it for other things. Exactly like right now, I'm going to dump it for everything I can do for it. So, uh, other than that, make sure you guys are checking for grenades. Grab your grenades. I think grenades are most commonly forgotten. Make sure you guys your smokes are good for covering. Make sure you guys grab grenades for doing damage, trying to pull push people out of buildings instead of putting yourself in harm's way. You can just throw a grenade, force them out, and take the full advantage of having the fight of knowing when they're coming out and where they're coming from so that's always helpful to have grenades and lots of them and stun grenades can be great for when you're about to charge a room you can throw a stun grenade and stun the guy and then hopefully kill him or at least get him to reload and that's the other thing is make sure you guys when you're about to fight fight within a reload so I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about the zones and crates um, the first three zones as you can see this one's collapsing on me really don't hurt that hard um, but wait is that a guy Oh, wow, it is. Okay, so I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to skip that right now. I'm going to hold shift. Shift allows me to see you guys see how that scope is staying dead straight. Um, however, um, you can see in the bottom right here, I've got my little lungs that are showing. Um, you can hold shift for only a certain amount of time, but it keeps that scope dead straight. Um, and it really helps you out when you're trying to fire from long distance or even short distance. It just keeps your gun flat so you're not actually um, swaying with your breaths and everything. So it helps you out a little bit, but you have a time limit. And once you've done it, um, you can't sprint right away. So make sure you guys, if you're thinking about moving right afterwards, give yourself a chance to catch your breath and then move right after you hold shift. So um, I'm going to go around this, these buildings just to make sure I protect myself. But talking back to the zones, um, the first three zones really don't hurt that much when they do damage. They're pretty runnable. You can kind of med kit through them or even painkiller through them. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, I still suggest that you do it. Um, but um, I would say if you can get a car, it's really nice because then you can try to rush to the crates and get crates really quick. They have lots of good gear, silencers, extra armor and stuff like that, and the max level armor. Other than that, if you guys just saw, I just switched my micro Uzi to um, auto. Reason being is it's possible I'm going to go into a building here soon and fight someone. So I like to have my guns on auto or burst when I'm going into a building versus single fire more when from in fields and stuff. Um, so that's going to be helping me out the most specifically for that one. Also, guys, I want you guys to know that you guys can use auto run. Auto run is the equal sign. All you have to do is hit it when it is, you're not running or anything, um, and it should help you out quite a bit. So other than that, now we need to talk about combat engagements and really talk about some of the, oh, 
Oh, we got a guy. Okay, let's shoot this guy. Oh, come on, get him. Oh, we got me good. Oh, oh, okay, there we go. All right, all right, so now I've got him down, so I'm going to get behind this tree. I got hit pretty hard, so I'm going to make him. Now, while I'm behind this tree, we can talk about um, making sure. Oh, God, he got me again. Um, make sure you back up off the tree. So right now I'm on the tree because I'm trying to protect myself while I make him. When I'm going to re-engage him, I'm going to back off the tree, and it's going to help me to where my gun's not sticking. And so you see I'm backing off the tree. If I was against the tree, I would have to get really far over to the sides to actually shoot the guy. Right now, my gun's not going to be obstructed by the tree, so I'll be able to aim down the side and lean it. Also, I'm going to use Q and E to aim here. Um, I'm going to use E to the right, and I'm always going to force myself to the right. Reason being is if I lean to the right, you guys can see my gun goes with me. As we're to the left, it's not going to help me as much. Um, you're going to lean more of your body out first before your gun comes out versus the right. Oh, let's get this guy. Oh, I got him once. All right, now I've got myself covered, so I'm going to run real quick, guys. I'm going to get to behind this tree over here and try to keep moving. Um, movement is key, but as I said, lean to the right first, um, but we're going to move. This is the same thing for squads and duos. Make sure you guys are covering each other, and once you cover and move, if you stay in the same spot, someone's going to see you, and you're going to get killed. So, um, oh, we got a car in front of us. So, but that's actually going to do it for this episode, guys. I've kind of given you everything I can give you that I can think of for immediate things that help. Um, so, if you guys are enjoying it, or you're new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. If you guys enjoy it, give us that thumbs up, and let us know that you like the video. And of course, always, let's get this guy really Really quick, <laughs> give us those comments and let us know. I'm gonna get this guy. Come on, come on, get him. All right, um, and give us those comments and let us know what you guys think of it. If you guys want to see anything, or if you guys have any other tips that you guys need to know. Um, but as I said, that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and we see you on the next episode of Lemur's Corner.